Hello everyone, it is day 30 of our 30 days of watercolor flowers, and today we are painting Bird of Paradise. Bird of Paradise might seem really complicated, but we're going to break it down to make it super easy and fun to paint. So the beak portion and the neck of Bird of Paradise is actually the greenery from where the flower emerges. The orange petal looking parts are actually sepals. So you know how when you're looking at like a rose and you see that little tiny bit of greenery underneath where the rose and the stem is connected? Those are called sepal. Um, so the orange here, these big long petal looking things are actually sepal. And they are protecting the flower which is this really pokey part in the middle and this part right here at the top. And they are blue and those are the actual flower petals. So we are going to start by painting the beak shape or online they called it canoe which I really liked as well. And I'm going to start with a bright yellow color that's pretty watery. And I have really nice paper that holds water well. Um, I would recommend you get paper like that because this technique we're about to use, you're going to need pretty nice paper. Um, and you'll see why, because this is going to stay really wet on purpose. So I am creating the shape of this canoe beak shape in bright yellow so that we have a really light base. If you look at a reference picture for Bird of Paradise, this beak portion has so many different colors in it. Yellows, pinks, blues, greens, orange. It just depends on the type and like how mature it is. So I had a lot of fun with this adding lots of colors in and you can see I added even more water to the mixture um, and then even created the neck with this same color as well. The paper I'm using is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and the reason I recommend it is we're painting this light wash of yellow but to get all of those colors I mentioned earlier we're going to have to work really fast while it's still wet to dab these colors in. So I'm looking at a reference picture while I'm doing this and I noticed areas where there is a little bit more green. Um, definitely at the tip and along the neck in the reference picture I'm looking at. Other reference pictures, most of this canoe beak section was green, but I really wanted to show a very vibrant um, example of a bird of paradise. And so I chose one that had all the colors. Um, and now I am picking up a Prussian blue and doing a very large section here in the middle of the blue. Now I want that to really blend in, which is why I'm doing that while it's still wet. So then it looks natural, like the entire thing is this mishmash of colors just naturally formed together by nature. Um, you can smooth things out while it's still wet. I made sure to keep everything in line with the shape that I had already made before. And then I'm picking up some heavy alizarin crimson and placing that just at the top and letting that all continue to blend in as well. Now I'm picking up some bright cad orange for the top and some portions along the neck. And you might be noticing that I am covering up most of that yellow color um, and you might be asking yourself why did you even bother to paint the yellow color but do you see here where I start dabbing at the paper towel and lifting some of the orange color out and we can see some really beautiful highlighted lifted areas of this yellow the yellow is still there as an under color it brings everything out into a bright pop of color and we can still see its presence it's just not quite as strong and not quite as dominant as all the other colors now that my paper is a little bit more dry i'm going through with some of the same colors and just deepening the color in some spots my paper is still a little bit wet so i'm still getting a slight blend and I really like doing that before it's all the way dry just in a few places. Now I'm picking up some bright cad orange and we are going to paint the sepals that look like petals. So I'm doing one up near the front here if you look at a reference picture they can be 
from the top all the way down to closer to the edge of the beak shape. Um, and then I went back with my bright kind of ultramarine Prussian blue mixture and wanted to put in this blue petal here so I wouldn't lose track of where it's supposed to be. So this has a lot of angles. I always think of like a half upside down triangle for that middle point so that I get the angle right. And apparently this little pointy blue bit is two petals combined and this is where the nectar is. So it kind of forms a little cup and kind of of a little sign like here, here I am, here's where the nectar is for the birds, I guess. <laughs> So that has really fun pointy jagged edges coming out towards kind of the middle head. Like I always think of like the unicorn spike. Um, and then we have more of these bright yellow orange sepal like petals coming out of the top. And my trick with these is I always do one main one that's right in the middle, really thick and long and pointy. And then I start coming from the side doing thinner ones to give the illusion that it's, you know, more from the side and then doing petals that are layered behind. So they're a little bit shorter and cut off. Sometimes they're longer just to give the illusion of fullness. I don't mind if these orange sepals connect just a little bit, but I do want to maintain a decent amount of white space so we can definitely see some distinction between them. I'm going to mix a brighter, deeper concentration of my cad orange color into the mixture I've already got on my palette. And while my little sepal yellow petals are still a bit wet, we're going to drop this darker orange color in at the base to give a lot of depth and shadow. The darker color is going to really help give a lot of distinction between the sepal. And I'm also going to paint one in this darker color because it automatically is going to be kind of shadowed being in the back so it gives a lot of distinction to that one as well and then i painted another one here on the side because i felt it lacked some fullness and of course i got a little bit of a blue bleed which is totally fine if that happens to you and you don't want that color totally blended in just rinse your brush and with a damp brush lift that color out, dab it on a paper towel, and you can even go back in and add some more of your original color to kind of help cancel it out. I'm adding a few more spots of that darker orange at the base of that new petal and one in the back to continue the depth and the shadows and all of that lovely contrast. Now there is one more bright blue petal that is coming out of the top of the Bird of Paradise. So I'm mixing up some of our bright blue color. And it's again, really thin, really tall, and really spiky. I got another bleed <laughs> with the blue. So again, I just used a damp brush to lift that color out. And I leaned into it a little bit. I let some of the bleed stay. Um, but, uh, if you want it to not bleed at all, you can let it dry, but sometimes you're just impatient and you get bleeds. I get bleeds all the time. Sometimes I like them. Sometimes they're annoying. So I just made this blue petal really nice and tall and pointy. And then using that same color I still had on my brush, added some more contrast to our other combined petals down towards the middle here. Now I'm picking up some burnt umber in a high concentration to put a little pokey spike at the end of the flower petals. So not that one. Nope. Yes, this one. <laughs> and the one at the top. <laughs> there we go. So again, look at your reference picture. They had this brown little spike, probably something to do with, you know, the sign of this is where the nectar is and predators stay out. So now I'm looking around at my bird of paradise and we're pretty much almost finished, but we have our light tones and our mid tones and we need to bump up the contrast and the depth with our darker tones. So I'm going through on the sepal, adding higher concentration of a yellow orange color, especially at the base where we can get a deeper shadow. I add different stripes of green and blue and pink and this comes with practice. I've said this before on another video, knowing where to put those little tiny bits of the darker color, but also leave some of your light tones and mid tones 
takes a lot of practice and sometimes I still mess up doing that too. Um, it's very easy to overwork a painting. So typically I will stand back and stare at it or walk away from it if I'm not sure what else it needs. A little bit goes a long way with this step. So just try to think about where it doesn't look right to you or where you think it needs some added texture or a heavier line and then try to add in an organic stroke with light pressure and see where it gets you see what you like about it see what you don't like about it the great thing about watercolor too is especially at this step you can just kind of add water and smooth it out or use your paper towel to dab it away and with that our bird of paradise is finished and oh my gosh we are filling in the last spot on our 30 day watercolor flower guide and i love bird of paradise i feel like i saved it best for last because i mean it's so unexpected but maybe easier than you might have thought such a fun flower to know how to paint and um i really enjoyed this entire journey with you thank you so much for being here for day 30 bird of paradise i will see you all next time on my channel bye <laughs>